Hi, my name's Penny, and as usual, I'm here to talk about some bookish things. Specifically, today, I thought, since supposedly everyone has some more time on their hands, now I don't know where you're getting this time, because personally I haven't found any, but apparently some people have some, uh, and so I thought it would be a good time to recommend some long epic fantasy series that I think you'll really enjoy. So I've got 10 series to talk about and I'm going to try and alternate between ones that you're more likely to have already heard about and ones that maybe you haven't heard about. So firstly, let's get the most obvious one out of the way. Uh, I'm going to talk about Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive. Now I've only read the first two books in the series. Each book is like a thousand pages long. I am very excited to read the third book, but I can't get my hands on it at the moment. But hopefully I'll have read enough of my own physical books by the time we get out of lockdown so that I can actually fit Oathbringer into my TBR, but I definitely recommend the Stormlight Archives. Also, I do have the Mistborn series, which I also recommend. It's another quite long epic fantasy series, although not as long as the Stormlight Archives. Both series have really amazing magic systems. I think that's what Brandon Sanderson is most well known for, but it also creates really interesting characters that feel very believable, characters that have a lot of emotional trauma so you can really like feel those emotions along with them. He's got complex political systems and plots where you can just never see the direction where things are gonna go. If you watch my channel you know I love Brandon Sanderson so I couldn't really do this video without mentioning either the Stormlight Archives or the Mistborn series. Then my next series, uh, I won't hold it up because like it's really massive. Like that's not even all the books. Let me pick up the first one. So uh, this is the Crown of Stars series by Kate Elliott. This is one that I think has a lot of similarities with Game of Thrones, although it's maybe slightly less violent and gory. Hmm. There are some terrible things that happen in this book though. Uh, I also think if you like the Realm of the Elderlings you might like this uh, because a lot of the main characters are actually children which is what you get in the beginning of the Assassin's Trilogy. So in this series, like Game of Thrones, you've got a bunch of different people fighting over the throne but at the same time uh, they're fighting a bunch of dragon people who have come across the sea to attack them. There's also some kind of fairy people. I forget what they're actually referred to as in this book but uh, the king had some kind of deal with one of these fairy people and ended up having a child with them. Was it the king or the duke? somebody who's fighting for the throne. You've also got this young girl who's learnt a bunch of astronomy type math, maths magic uh, and you've got a bunch of people dabbling with dark magic. There is just a lot going on with these and I think if you like epic fantasy you would love this series. Personally I'm only two books into the series if I'm completely honest but I will be picking up the third one very soon. Uh, as soon as I can fit a 900 page book into my TPR. Next back to ones that you've probably heard about uh, and that is the Name of the Wind series. So so far we've got the Name of the Wind which this edition is like 650 pages and then the Wise Man's Fair which this edition, this very tall edition, is like a thousand pages. So these are really long books. Now I have been telling people don't bother reading this until Patrick Rothfuss finally comes through with the third book because we've been waiting a really long time. But maybe I've got a new strategy now. Maybe I think everyone should read this and like tell Patrick Rothfuss how much you loved it and maybe that'll like make him feel more motivated to finish off that last book because I think he's really struggling with it so maybe he needs some positive encouragement. If you haven't heard about this series, basically we've got this main guy called Quoth. In the beginning of the story we meet him when he is working in this middle of nowhere tavern uh, and kind of get the idea that the countryside around them is not very safe. Then this chronicler arrives and convinces him to tell his life story about how he studied magic at the university, he learned sword fighting with these mythic warriors uh, and he had some kind of relationship going on with this powerful king. So there's all these myths and legends about him and you're kind of learning his story while at the same time wondering how he's ended up just being a barman in the middle of nowhere. 
There's also these demons called the Chandrian that you learn about throughout the series and a few other mysteries that I cannot wait to see how Rothfuss wraps them up in the last book. <sighs> I really hope he does a good job with it. But I do think Patrick Rothfuss does quite a good mix of like quite a solid like scientific magic system but also softer magic system as well his writing style is quite beautiful so there's some more reasons to read this series if you need them. So another one that you may not have heard about is The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant The Unbeliever by Stephen Donaldson. So I've got bind ups here um so maybe they're not as big but these bind ups are 1200 pages long so I guess each book in the trilogy is 400 pages long that's not that long but you've got this trilogy to read through and this trilogy to read through and there is in fact another trilogy after that that I haven't read yet but I would like to I just think I need to reread these first so Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever is this really old grumpy man who has leprosy so I learned a lot about leprosy from these books, starters, but then he ends up stumbling through this magical portal into this magical world where he has been prophesied to be the savior. He most of the time believes that this is a dream uh, and unfortunately one of the kind of crappy bits about this series is when he believes it's a dream he actually rapes this young girl and though he spends the rest of this book trying to redeem himself for that even when he's still not sure whether it's a dream or not he does spend a lot of time trying to redeem himself for that and I think like even though it's kind of shitty that it was included it does really make him much more of an anti-hero because throughout this book series he does a lot of really great things as far as saving this magical world but he's still a really terrible guy at the same time and that just makes the story quite interesting. Also I would say the world building in this series is amazing. Um, the magical world that he ends up in is like the level of creativity that Lord of the Rings was at the time. I don't actually know when this series was first published. 1977. 1977. So I think if you like Lord of the Rings and you like anti-heroes then you might want to give this series a go. Also a lot of the reason why I would like to reread this series is because there are these giants who spend a lot of time traveling the oceans and ships uh, and I kind of miss one of the characters that was a giant and I'd like to meet up with them again. Next, back to ones that you've probably heard about, I'm going to talk about The Realm of the Elderlings. This is the only one I have because I got it for $2 from a thrift shop. I'm kind of hoping the whole series will somehow magically find its way to me using the same method. Uh, so The Realm of the Elderlings is made up I think of about four different trilogies, although one of those trilogies has four books so it's not a trilogy. But all of the stories are set in the six duchies or in the countryside around the six duchies. Uh, the first trilogy I have read which is about Fitz who is the bastard son of the king in waiting and because of that ends up becoming the royal assassin. It's not a spoiler because it's the name of one of the books. This is book one of the second trilogy which is the live ship traders. In this one we have these live ships that are able to be imbued with their own personality through their connection to the family that owns them uh, and there's a whole bunch of drama going on with these families that own them and there's also this pirate who has this vision of capturing a live ship for his pirate kingdom that he's trying to create. Oh and there's also these weird sea serpents that kind of seem to be forgetting their memories. So this is a really interesting series. I believe that the third series has something to do with the wit which is the ability that some people in this world have to build a connection with animals. I just think what I've read of the series so far Robin Hobb does a really good job of developing her characters and she also puts in some fantastical elements that are just really interesting twists on more classical fantasy elements. I definitely recommend this series. And it's not too late to get in on the older Ling Along I think because they're only up to like the second book so you could easily catch up. Actually there's a 
readathon going on, the Cosmere along for all of Brandis Sanderson's books as well. So I'll leave some links to those read-alongs down below if that's something you'd be interested in. So the next one is another one you might not know about. Uh, it's another series that hasn't been finished uh, and that is the Ruins of Ambrai series by Melanie Ruin. So I've shown this recently in some videos where I needed to talk about damaged books because um, my copy of that is quite damaged but my copy of the Mage Bond Trader, the second book, oh it's beautiful. So that's a nice contrast. So this series we've been waiting a really long time for the third book. It's going to be called Capital's Tower. Basically the story follows three sisters and each book is somewhat focused on a different sister and for the most part the sisters end up being put on different sides in this very political war against the different magical factions. There's also a lot of like mysticism and mystery. I don't know, I'll admit that it has been a while since I read this series but I have been waiting for the third book to get a bit more concrete before I go back and reread these. But from what I remember, I think that you don't need the third book to enjoy this series, so you could still start it. And maybe some people starting this series, again, would really motivate Melanie Ruan, give her some positive motivation to finish that third book. Now Melanie Ruan does have a much better excuse than Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, unfortunately, just when she was writing the third book, her mother died and then she suffered quite bad depression as a result of that. Uh, and then when she got back into writing, she didn't really want to go back to the series that she'd been trying to write through all of that. So she decided to write some other things. I've read those other things, but I would love for her to come back and finish the series. She has said that she's going to, but I don't doubt that finishing off this series would be a massive challenge because there's so many clues and so many threads going on. So please give her some support, read these books, and then maybe... I'll get the third book. That would be amazing. I, you don't even know, those of you who have been waiting for books like a year, uh, wait till you get a book that you've been waiting like, I don't even know, like at least 15 years. I've been waiting at least 15 years. But I do think they're great and I really recommend this series. Nice big chunky ones, you know? So next we have another one that you may have heard about uh, and that is the Seven Waters series by Juliette Marillier. So Juliette Marillier is a New Zealander so she gets on my list just for that. Uh, also she writes these really beautiful fantasy stories. The first book I don't actually have, my mum's got it, it's called Daughters of the Forest and it's like a retelling of the Seven Swans story. In the story we've got this young girl who ends up cursed uh, and her brothers are turned into swans so if she wants to get her brothers back she's not allowed to speak and she has to weave these things, I forget exactly what, but she has to do it with these needles or something that like scratch up all her hands and it's really painful uh, and she can't really talk to her brothers in the meantime so she's really worried that she's gonna lose them. At the same time this guy comes and kidnaps her and forces her into marriage in order to get her kingdom under his control. So if you like hate to love stuff this is kind of that, uh, but it's also really traumatic because she's trying to save her brothers at the same time. And then I believe the rest of the series follows on through different generations of her family. I haven't read them yet, but I have heard really good things about them and I definitely plan to continue the series. So this is definitely a series that I feel pretty safe in recommending. The next series I have for you, I used to actually own a significant amount of the series, but I recently sold it off all in one go. Uh, and that is The Saga of Recluse by L. E. Modisett Jr. This is actually a series that I ended up listening to probably the last 10 books in the series via audiobook, but I read the first 10 in physical form. So there's a good 20 books for you to go through here. And each one was pretty chunky. I don't have them here to check and I could check online, but I'm not going to. I think they're about 500 pages each. So if you want a long series with lots to get into, this is one of them. Uh, basically this is a world where there is auto magic and there is chaos magic and the different books basically explore times when auto magic is the bad guys and other times when chaos magic is the bad guys and sometimes the main character is on the side of the bad guys and discovering that. There's also uh, grey magicians who are in the middle and don't believe that either side is good. Also about halfway through the series this spaceship comes from this place where people drive their spaceships using telepathy uh, and so those people crash onto the world and 
learn some of these magical powers and kind of end up being integrated into this society. But I think what I just really love about this series is that it explores such diverse characters. Some of them are royalty, some of them are young, some of them are old, some of them are just like craftsmen learning their craft. I think my favorite one was like the magic engineer where he just wanted to be an engineer but he ended up being like a leader and involved in this big war. I will say some of the books involve quite a lot of war strategy and tactics which I personally don't enjoy that much but if you like that then you might like those ones. Also you don't necessarily need to read this whole series. Uh, if you look you can see who the main characters are for the different books and although sometimes they're interrelated generally if you pick up the books just for a particular particular character you won't be too bothered about not having read the rest of the books. I don't know I think the main thing I love about this series is just the concept of order versus chaos. Okay back to ones that you've probably heard of uh, we have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor uh, in the sequel Muse of Nightmares. Now there's only two books so it's not a massive series. I don't know if you could really count it as epic fantasy but each book is five to 500 and something pages. I think Muse of Nightmares is a bit longer. I don't have it yet but I do love my beautiful copy of Strange the Dreamer. So in this book we've got this boy named Laszlo Strange. He was an orphan. When he was young he was obsessed with this city of weep. Then one day everybody just forgot the name of the city and all the places where the name had been written down got replaced with the word weep. So he becomes very obsessed with this mystery about this city and ends up becoming a librarian and doing research about it. Then when some people are called upon to try and solve some problems that the city of Weep is having he manages to get himself involved in the group that's trying to help with that problem. This series is definitely one for people who like really flowery writing. If you don't like flowery writing you won't like this. I will also say that in the second book especially the world opens up a lot more and I could definitely see Lainey Taylor writing a lot more books in this world in the future. So it might not technically count as an epic yet but I suspect in the future it might. I definitely recommend the series if you like stories with people who are semi-godlike and also people with lots of really strange magical powers. So Last series, this is another one you probably haven't heard about, although I just realized that actually if you watch my channel a lot, all these ones that I'm saying you might never have heard of, you've probably heard me talk about them before. But regardless, uh, the last series that I'm going to recommend is the Pleiocean Saga, what is this series called? The Saga of the Exiles series by Julian May. So this is the first three books, this is, no that's, yes. This is, so this is the first three books, uh, the first and the second book and then the third book there's actually a fourth book. So this series is set like millions of years in the past. Basically in the future they found this like time portal where they were able to send people back in time. Uh, so far back in time that they decided that that's where they would send their criminals. So we follow this group who's been sent back in time. Basically they're expecting to just have to live in complete isolation because they don't think anyone was around way back then. But when they get back there they find there is this whole civilization, basically this alien race that is enslaving the humans that are being sent back. And some of these humans that are being sent back have psychic abilities and this alien race is kind of able to take advantage of that and they have their own psychic abilities. This is another one where it's been a little while since I read it but I am again really excited to continue it. Uh, about halfway through this series some other criminals get sent back in time and they are the bad guys or at least a group that was severely misdirected in this series. Um, so this series is basically set in the future or maybe it's kind of like the 80s except that people start developing these psychic abilities and primarily this series follows a particular family. I think these actually have family trees in the front. Um, so primarily it follows these two brothers and then kind of their dynasty of psychic family that they're building up around them. Uh, in Jack the Bodyless one of those children gets born and almost immediately he like ascends past the need to have a body although him losing his body is somewhat traumatic. And there's also in this series like a murder mystery going on because 
for starters, people are quite afraid of these people developing different psychic abilities. But also it seems like there's something else going on. So this is more science fiction. So it probably doesn't fit in my epic fantasy recommendations. But then this series that it links into is definitely epic fantasy. But it's epic fantasy with like a science fiction twist. Perfect. Isn't that everything you've ever wanted? Anyway, that is a lot of epic fantasy series recommendations to keep you busy. Do let me know what big epic fantasy series have I missed from this list. I never have enough time for reading these giant epic fantasy series but I do think that the payoff for the effort you have to put into reading these series is usually worth it so I would love more recommendations. Or alternatively if you've read any of the series that I mentioned today I would love to talk to you about them down in the comments. Otherwise thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're staying safe and looking after yourself and I will see you next time.